ಮಲಂ ಶರೀರ ವೈದ್ಯಕೇನ ಯೋಪಾಕರೋತ್ತ ಪ್ರವರ ಮುನೀನಾ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಪ್ರಾಂಜಲಿರಾನತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಆಬಾಹುಪುರುಷಾಕಾರ ಶಂಖಚಕ್ರಸಿಧಾರಿಣ ಸಹಸ್ರಶಿರ ಶ್ವೇತ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ ವಿವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಅಯಂಗಾರ್ ಯೋಗ ಹೋಪ್ ಯು ಬಿನ್ ಫೈಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಬೋತ್ ಯೂಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ಫರ್ಮೇಟಿವ್ ಇನ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಅನಾದರ್ ಫಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಯೋಗ ಆಸ್ ಲೇಡ್ ಔಟ್ ಬೈ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಮುನಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಏಟ್ ಫೋಲ್ಡ್ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆಸನ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಯಾಮ ಆರ್ ದ ತರ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ ದೋ ಈಚ್ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ ಮೇ ಸೀಮ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಈಚ್ ಅದರ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅಷ್ಟಾಂಗ ಯೋಗ ಆರ್ ಇಂಟರ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಒನ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿ ಅದರ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಟೂ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಸೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಸನ ಆರ್ ಯಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಿಯಮ ಯಮ ರೆಸ ರೆಫರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಕಾಂಡಕ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಿಯಮ ರೆಫರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ಕಾಂಡಕ್ಟ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೌ ಇಟ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಒನ್ ಪರ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಹಿಂಸ ಅಹಿಂಸ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ ನೋ ಇಸ್ ನಾನ್ ವಯಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಕೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ರಿಲೇಟ್ ಟು ದ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಸನ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ಎನ್ ಆಸನ ದೋ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಸ್ಟೇಬಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಂಗ್ ದ ಟೆಂಡೆನ್ಸಿ ಟು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಅಗ್ರೆಸಿವ್ ಆರ್ ವಯಲೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಅವಾಯ್ಡೆಡ್ this is a way in which niyama then relates to asana in this manner the entire eight fold path are interdependent and interrelated yoga as is is a beautiful subject that unites the physical physiological mental and spiritual this remarkable journey must not be forgotten and should be explored thoroughly hence asana is a leading step in the practice of yoga in today's episode we will be seeing triyanga mukhaika pada paschamottanasana triyanga means three parts this asana involves the knee foot and buttock as well as the straight leg and the face this is the composite meaning of the word in triyanga mukhaika pada paschamottanasana one leg is kept in virasana the other leg is kept in dandasana upon which the practitioner extends the spine and moves to a forward extension now we will see how to do the pose we will now see how to do triyanga mukhaika pada paschamottanasana like all sitting and forward extensions you start you start with the legs in dandasana where the thighs are together thighs are rolled in press down the knees join the entire length of the shins join as well as the ankles join as in dandasan the whole leg should be extended downward against with the chest and spine should be lifted tall it is particular to note that against the thigh the entire abdomen should rise up the abdomen should not settle on the thigh or the hip area so pressing the palm anteriorly raising the spine spread the collarbone from the center of the chest spread the chest muscles wide pull the back ribs in be tall as far as the spine is concerned contrasting the spine the leg should be held down heel extended big toe mount active forward from there the practitioner has to bend one leg in virasan which was already shown before in sitting poses here we take the right leg in virasan holding the ankle and tucking the leg back once the leg goes in virasan the heel should be rotated out and the toes should point backwards again one should not sit on top of the heel the heel should be out 
and the toes should point back straight. There, as you see, this leg is a Virasan leg. This leg continues to be a Dandasan leg. Here, usually, the spine tends to tilt on the straight leg side. There is an uneven touch of the spine, uneven touch of the buttock. The buttock on the Virasan side has a tendency to lift and drop towards the Dandasan leg side. You have to make sure that you're pushing the buttock down on the Virasan leg, adjusting the spine centrally and once again raising the chest up. Because you have a tendency to fall on the straight leg or the Dandasan leg side, you tend to land on the outer thigh. And therefore, it's important to roll the thigh in and catch the inner thigh of the straight leg. So the inner thighs of both legs will be joined, it will be rooted, held down and then the practitioner has to go to an upright concave back position with the ribs sharply engaged. From here, you move with the hands up in Urdhva Hasta position. Going in the Urdhvahasta position with the spine extended, once again adjust the weight towards the bent leg or Virasan leg side such that you are not falling on the straight or Dandasan leg side. Here maintaining the pull of the, of the buttock down of the spine on the bent leg side, you have to position the sternum over the straight leg thigh which calls for a mild twist, mild rotation where the sternum is turning over the straight leg. Here you will have to once again head for the leg, holding the feet around the outer edges of the foot and around the inner edge of the foot, sharply pull the back in and raise the chest up. You will see at every stage the spine will choose to drop on the straight leg side. Hence, at every stage you have to reinforce the spine such that the touch of the buttock on the floor is even and sharp. From there, lifting the chest up, creating a sharp tri triangle position, spine up, hands straight, legs straight. From there, Pulling the back ribs in, you will have to allow the posterior spine to flow in such a way that the abdomen rests on the thighs, the sternum comes over the straight leg side and then the hand holds the foot. After a few months of practice, the hand may be extended and interlocked in a way that the hand holds the wrist. Elbows up, head rested sternum rested, abdomen rested, buttock evenly touching on both sides. This is Triyanga Mukha Pada Paschimottanasana. From here, you once again come to the concave back position and then release the hands by the sides of the hip, straightening the leg out. We will now show you simple prop arrangements that can help you do Triyanga Mukhaika Pada Paschimottanasana. I will show you a classical pose to invite your attention on a critical point. So folding the right leg in Virasana, making sure the heel is rolling out and the toes are pointing backward, the calf muscle is also rolled out, the inner thighs of both legs are pressed, raising the spine up the practitioner will move to the final pose. Right from the start to now, you can see that the buttock on the straight leg side is being rested and the buttock on the bent leg side is lifting. What happens is this asymmetrical contact of the buttock makes the spine collapse on one side. So the spine as you can see is completely falling on the straight leg side. The rooting or the attachment of the buttock on the bent leg side is non-existent. So the entire pose collapses on one side. This also causes an asymmetry that is 
the spine on the falling side becomes dense and narrow and the, spa, and the, and the spine on the bent leg side becomes more well spread. Thicker spine, thinner spine. So what needs to be done then is we have to establish a symmetry in the pose. We use a blanket to only support the straight leg side buttock. So as you see, the minute you do that, the buttock that is placed on a blanket is on the straight leg side. There is no support for the buttock on the bent leg side. Here then, the practitioner has to establish a symmetry, sharply pressing the bent leg side buttock. And then you will have to proceed to the pose, raising the chest up and going towards the foot. Now, as you see, before when the buttock was unsupported, you would see the spine being thrown on the straight leg side. But when you offer a support only to the straight leg side buttock, then as the practitioner moves to the final pose, you see that the buttock is symmetrical, hence the entire length of the spine maintains symmetry. This is how a simple prop arrangement can cause a major change in the pose. We saw the blanket being used to marginalize or reduce the tilt. However, if a person falls too much on the straight leg side and a blanket is not enough to adjust them centrally, then you may use greater height on the side of the straight leg buttock, such as a bolster, so that that height can give them extra support to push them back to the center. While folding the leg to Virasan, sometimes a practitioner who already has a knee problem may find it difficult to sit that low at ground level. It may cause a certain stress around the knee. Though Virasan itself is very helpful for the knee, there are very many variations by which Virasan can be done and in Triyanga Mukhai Kapada Paschimottanasana, Virasan can be done to ensure that a practitioner can do the pose. Here, for starters, we use a bolster. A bolster is used for both buttocks. As you see, in his case, the bolster is enough to support both sides of the buttock. But if a practitioner is wider at the hip, then you should use a pile of blankets to make sure both buttocks are supported. It's not a single buttock and therefore the arrangement of the prop should be such that both sides of the hip are supported, such as folded blankets or pillows that support the entire width of the hip. Here, you will have to bend the leg in Virasan. This height gives some more freedom by which the leg can be bent. As you see, when I go in ground level, there is a full fledged joining of the thigh to the calf and so it's a tighter pose. When I raise the height, it offers a little more freedom around the knee and therefore the stress around the knee is much lesser. And therefore using a height, a practitioner can then proceed making sure still you're pressing the bent leg side of the buttock, centralizing the spine as you move forward to Triyanga Mukhaika Pada Paschimottanasana. So as you move forward, continuously press the bent leg side of the hip down and then move spinally lengthening the pose, head down, sternum rested on the thigh, Abdomen rested on the thigh, completing the pose, Triyanga Mukhaika Pada Paschimottanasana. As was mentioned, people with wider hips may use a spread blanket, a pile of spreaded blankets like this, to support the entire width of the buttock without leaving any portion of the hip hanging. So, if a person is wider, as you can see, this blanket offers more space to offer complete support to the pelvis. When a person is not able to bend forward or struggles to hold the foot in Triyanga Mukhaika Pada Paschimottanasana, here 
firstly you will have to use a generous amount of height to make sure the hamstring as well as the paraspinal muscles are free to move. So here the student is using three folded blankets. You could use greater height like a set of bolsters or bolsters with added blankets on top of it. Now when you go to this pose and a person tries to reach, the student tries to reach for the foot but then struggles to hold the foot whereby the spine becomes convex, the back ribs gives out and then the entire frontal space of the spine collapses, then here you will have to use a belt around the arch of the foot in a way that suppose a student is holding the belt close but still the spine is really collapsing, the back ribs are struggling to engage, then you can use the belt such that it is held more loosely, it has more space and then gripping the belt you will have to pull the back ribs in and raise the surface of the chest up. Always in a forward extension the abdomen must be kept soft but extended away from the root of the thigh. So holding, making sure the spine is engaged and the chest abdomen is extended gradually over a period of time the student can then crawl with their hands down the belt, hold it closer to the foot but every time the hand moves the spine must not collapse, the spine stays lifted, the back rib stays engaged, the thigh remains pressed down. In this manner you gradually work yourself until you proceed to the belt right by the sides of the foot and then Going there, over time you learn to develop the extension the pose requires, then holding the belt you can go to the final pose where the entire paraspinal muscles are opened, the hamstrings are extended, the buttock is levelled and then the head, sternum, abdomen is rested on the leg. All forward extensions have rested variations by which the brain, head, heart and abdomen can be relaxed and rejuvenated. We will now see the restive variation of this pose. For this, though classically the thighs must be joined to each other in the pose, while doing the restive variation, it's okay to keep the legs mildly apart. So you widen the Virasan leg a little away and then you widen the Dandasan leg a little away until the abdomen has a little more freedom to move. Here you then use a bolster placed on top of the shin of the straight leg and then move to Triyanga Mukhaika Pada Paschimottanasan where the hands are holding the foot and the head remains rested on the bolster. You can spend a lot of time in this restive variation because it gives complete refreshment and relaxation to the entire nervous system and the heart. As you see, usually in the classical pose there is a chance that the elbow will hang down and when the elbow hangs down it can collapse the chest because here the elbows also remain placed on the horizontal bolster it gives the spreading for the chest region and the width between the legs gives the spreading for the abdominal region making this an overall restorative variation.
We now saw how to do Triyanga Mukhaika Pada Paschimottanasan. We did both the classical pose and used props for our benefit. As we saw, Triyanga Mukhaika Pada Paschimottanasan uses the length of the spine and addresses all segments of our feet. Generally, forward extension has two states. One is the Madhyama state, which is the concave back position. For example, the Padangushta position, where the hand holds the feet and a proper concave back is established. This gives the anterior spine a good elongation. While we go to the final pose, the posterior spine also gets a complete elongation. This therefore, forward bends address the entire length of the spine, both the anterior as well as the posterior. Since one leg is in Virasan and the other leg is in Dandasan, the ankle, the knee as well as the root of the femur, the hip, gets a lot of benefit from the practice of this pose. In the straight leg, the hamstrings, the knees and the ankles benefit a lot. Hence, when we switch sides one side after another, it makes the utility of the leg, the utilization of the leg complete. In the position where we go to the complete forward extension, the head remains rested, the chest remains rested, gives, giving us a lot of nervous as well as cardiac rejuvenation. Also, the abdominal organs remain soft and well extended. Therefore, this pose also in the restorative variation can be practiced by menstruating ladies. This is the last of the forward extensions that we will be seeing in this series. Until the next episode, happy practicing. Ooh. Mm -hmm.